Is 2020 the year that you leave Adobe behind to break free from their subscription model and still be able to do your creative work? I made a video over a year ago about whether or not you could leave Adobe for affinity programs. But at that point, I still wasn't sure that creative professionals could leave Adobe yet. A lot has changed in a year and a half, and 2020 is the year that I believe many creatives can finally break free from Adobe because there are enough alternatives out there and alternatives that work as well as the Adobe programs for the creative work that you need to do. There will still be many of you who won't leave Adobe because there's a specific feature in one of their programs that hasn't been duplicated in the alternatives. But for lots of creatives, 2020 will be the year that they can save themselves a lot of money by canceling their Adobe subscription. I'm not going to talk about every app that's included in the Adobe Creative Cloud ecosystem. There are just too many of them, but I want to talk about the main ones that most people use. First up, let's talk about Photoshop, the most well-known Adobe program and probably the most widely used of all of them. Photoshop is easily replaced by Affinity Photo, which has a very similar feature set and a better user interface. I really feel that you can replace most of everything you do in Photoshop with Affinity Photo. It has layers, masks, blend modes, effects, advanced selections. It's able to handle vector graphics better than Photoshop. There's a lot of things in Affinity Photo that just work super well. So I'm confident that most of you, if you're using Photoshop, can switch over to Affinity Photo with no problem. Next up is Illustrator, the powerhouse of vector graphics editor from Adobe. I think just like Photoshop, Illustrator can easily be replaced by the Affinity alternative, which is Designer. Designer is Affinity's oldest product, and it works super well. There will be a few features here and there that don't quite match up with Illustrator, but those are few and far between. Mostly, it works just like Illustrator, just like you're used to. The learning curve is very low for someone coming from Illustrator, and so I think you'll be able to jump in and start doing your vector graphics no problem. Then we come to InDesign the industry standard in desktop publishing. If you've watched this channel before, then you know that I think Affinity Publisher is way better than Adobe InDesign in many ways. I made a video just about five ways that Affinity Publisher beats Adobe InDesign. Now I know that Affinity Publisher is still less than a year old, and so it doesn't have as much development as some of the other Affinity programs, but it is getting updated all the time and it is coming along really well. As an ecosystem, the three Affinity apps really beat the three Adobe apps for terms of usability. The Studio Link feature in Affinity Publisher brings them all of their features together in one place so that you can do all of your work in one single workflow. This makes it so much easier than what we have on the Adobe side where we have to open each program separately, bring documents between them. There's just a lot that goes on with the Adobe programs that makes barriers to entry and makes it take more time to get your work done. Remember that all of the Affinity programs cost just $50 a piece and there is no subscription with them. Now I want to talk about Premiere, After Effects, and Audition together as a video editing trio. But if you've used them before, you know that they don't actually work that well together and seamlessly. Whenever you want to go from Premiere into After Effects, you have to take your project, open it up in After Effects, add your effect or your animation, then bring it back into Premiere. All of this involves opening multiple programs and switching between them. Uh, it's the same thing with Audition when you want to edit your audio. This is why I think it's a no-brainer for creatives to switch to DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve brings all three of these together, the editor, the effects and animation, and the audio in one application, and you can move between the different steps of your post-production without any trouble at all. Besides the fact that DaVinci Resolve is the industry standard in color grading, many people already need to take their projects from Premiere into DaVinci Resolve to color grade them. So you might as well just work in DaVinci Resolve the whole time because it has all of the features that you need. On top of that, DaVinci Resolve is free. Now there is a studio version that costs $300, but for most people, they won't need the features of the studio version. And if you're working on a really large production where you need those features, $300 won't be that big of an expense to you. The other thing that a lot of people have found is that Premiere runs really slowly on their machine. And DaVinci Resolve runs way faster. Even on slower and older machines, DaVinci Resolve seems to be able to work much better than Premiere Pro, and especially than After Effects. After Effects can really bog your machine down, slow it down, and make it so you can't get anything else done. And remember, even if you go with the studio version of DaVinci Resolve for $300, there is no subscription. And that version is free for those who buy Blackmagic cameras. So now let's talk about Lightroom. Lightroom is a problem. 
And I'm willing to admit that. Many photographers have huge, huge catalogs that are in Lightroom, and so they're heavily invested into that ecosystem. I am not a professional photographer, although I do take and edit a lot of photos. They aren't the ginormous catalogs that most professional photographers have. So I can only talk to you about what I know, which may be different than your specific use case. Even if you choose to leave Adobe for other things, you might choose to stay with Lightroom. The photography bundle is still just $10, despite a scare last year, where Adobe acted like they were upping that subscription to $20. Now, there are different cloud storage levels, and they're definitely pushing Lightroom towards the cloud. So depending on how much cloud storage you need, your price may vary on that. If you do want to leave Adobe behind completely, Luminar 4 looks like a really great alternative to Lightroom feature-wise, but I haven't used it myself, so I can't tell you what it's like for usability. But it does look like it can do all of the editing stuff that Lightroom can do, as well as the cataloging stuff. For me personally, I've moved almost all of my photo editing over to the iPad because I need to do it while I'm traveling, and it is way more convenient for me to bring an iPad on my travels than a laptop. So on the iPad, I've been using Darkroom because I think it works way better than Adobe's Lightroom app on the iPad. It is not a full-featured Lightroom Classic replacement, and it doesn't have those cataloging features, but for what I need to do, it works really well and costs just $10 for all of the features. All right, there are other apps in the Adobe Creative Cloud, but these are the main ones that I think most people use regularly. If you cancel your Adobe subscription at this point, you'll save over $600 a year. And the alternative apps cost less than that without a subscription model. Even if you choose to purchase the studio version of DaVinci Resolve and purchase Luminar 4 and all of the Affinity apps, you're only going to be spending about $540 on single purchase license apps. So you won't need to be renewing that over and over again. And for most people, they're just going to use the free version of DaVinci Resolve, purchase maybe the three Affinity apps for 150 bucks, and they're done. Now, some photographers, like I said, will need to stay with Lightroom, depending on what their model's like and what their workflow is. But for a lot of people, they're going to be able to save a lot of money by switching away from Adobe this year. I know that not everyone is going to leave Adobe behind. A lot of you still need to be on Adobe for collaboration with clients and with other creatives. And that makes sense. But for those of you who are switching this year, I hope you found this video helpful with recommendations of the applications that you can use. I have courses on a number of these applications that I will link in the description of this video that can help you learn them. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have, please like and subscribe for more content like this.